If you're using AI, does that make you less secure? Are you possibly getting more secure because the LLM can't keep a secret? But it's not a game changer. You still need the team to do the other 95% of the work. So there's a huge potential here. Most hacking problems are not big data problems. Hi, this is Carsten from Hacking Matters, where each week we discuss the opportunities in cybersecurity. This week we're looking at AI and how it influences cyber, or in many ways doesn't influence it. It's the end of 2024 right now, and we're talking about AI as it exists today. So for the last two years, that predominantly meant large language models, but there's other AI technologies around different types of machine learning, pattern matching and whatnot. If you're watching this in the future and you look back and you say, oh, they didn't know what was coming, of course we don't, but for the last two years, the technology has been relatively stable. In some sense, has been surprisingly simple. An LLM is basically just a compression of a lot of data and then a autocomplete machine to spit out meaningful words or even sentences from that. It's very, very impressive what it can do. But because of its simplicity, of course, hackers can trick it in doing insecure actions. And that's part of what we talk about today. That's just one of three questions that we want to go into today. The first one being what we just postulated. If you're using AI, does that make you less secure? The second question we want to explore is, if you're not using AI, are you anyway getting less secure because the hackers are using AI? And the third question is, are you possibly getting more secure because of AI, because it helps with hacking defense? So does AI make it worse for some people? Does AI make it worse for everyone? Or does AI make it better for everyone who's using it? I think it's a yes on all three of those. So depending on how you navigate the AI landscape, you can get a larger upside than downside, but you have to do this based on an understanding of where AI matters and where you should stay away from it. Let's start with the new vulnerabilities that are introduced through AI, specifically large language models. We know attacks on large language models, especially around prompt injection. Those, however, just take away from the utility of the LLM. They rarely hack anything in particular. They basically make the LLM be less effective in what it does. So prompt injections are relevant, but probably not as a hacking vector yet. What's a lot more relevant though, are LLMs that are fed with company proprietary data. Imagine for instance, somebody tries to replace a call center operation with a chatbot, feeding historic call center conversations into that chatbot so that the bot can respond as if it were one of those humans. That chatbot now has access to confidential information from these previous client conversations. And chatbots, like I said, they're very simple, like all LLMs. They're basically just big memories and autocomplete machines. They're almost like little children. They really can't keep a secret. So if there is information in there, there's some set of questions and interactions that can get the information out there, no matter how much filtering you do later. Whenever you're using AI, specifically LLMs, with confidential data, proprietary data, personally identifiable data, any other kind of customer data, you are risking that the information leaks out because the LLM can't keep a secret. So that needs to be considered an information security incident, and hence this is relevant for hacking. So a clear yes to the first question, can AI make you less secure? Yes, it will spill the beans. It will give out all the information you give it. Second question, will AI make you less secure even if you're not using it? And again, it's a yes. Because hackers use AI as co-pilot technology, just like everyone else is these days. And hackers go through some routine steps, like discovering what belongs to a company. And LLM is relatively good in answering that finding certain patterns on websites that indicate security vulnerabilities, parsing through large collections of vulnerability scanning data to find the vulnerabilities that are worth exploiting. All of those are kind of co-pilot steps. So if we allow only the criminals to gear up, while on the defense side don't use AI, 
we do slowly lose out on the hacking race. However, hackers do not have much potential to use AI because most of what they're doing is not routine. We talked about this in the three videos on the hacking journey. Remember, breaking in, hacking through, cashing out. Almost none of this is routine. There are elements of scanning and parsing large data sets, but most of what hackers do is very individual, very trial and error while trying to be quiet and sneaky around the network. So it requires a lot of skill and it's basically the opposite of a random guessing childlike machine. We ran the numbers for our own red team operations and we conclude that we can optimize by about 5%. So we take 5% less time for hacking journey when using AI technologies. We'll take any 5% gain, obviously, but it's not a game changer. You still need the team to do the other 95% of the work. So yes, AI will make you less secure, even if you're not using it, but current state of affairs, not by a whole lot. Third question, can AI make you more secure? And that's the strongest yes yet, at least the potential. Because speaking of routine tasks, while the hackers have very few routine tasks, on the defense side, we are overwhelmed with routine tasks. We look at huge data sets and have to pass them again and again and again to find that needle in the haystack. The once every month event where somebody successfully breaks in, trying not to be tired out at that point, and really being able to spring into action. So if we're able to reduce the routine work on the defense side, we can focus our capabilities on where the human intelligence really matters, around deep investigation, the threat hunting, the incident response. So my best estimate is that we can automate around 90% of the work on the defense side, at least when it comes to analytics, and that is threat monitoring. So now our funnel, prevent, detect, recover. Usually the middle part, detect, is the heavy lifter because it's a 24 seven operation. Lots of people are engaged in this. And I believe that over time, based on current technology, we can reduce the workload by up to 90%. Now compare that to the 5% we talked about earlier. So there's a huge potential here to actually come out positive, but we have to use these technologies. We can't just let Others use co-pilots while sticking with our old CM-based socks with manual analysis of, of every incident. That's not going to get us there. So on balance, I'm positive on the impact of AI on cyber. At least there's a huge potential. The technology will progress, so hopefully we'll get to re-record this every year or so and give you an update on what's actually changed. But until then, I wanted to leave you with basically a small nomenclature on deciding which problems are actually AI friendly and that they can be optimized a lot and which other problems are harder. So uh, at least current state of technology still reliant on human intelligence or just have no need for AI at all. When we're discussing the potential of AI in my team, we're always asking three questions. Is it A, a big data problem? Does it B, have complex connections between them? And is it C, easy to evaluate a solution as correct once you have it? You have some problems that just cater towards AI, not even just machine learning. Remember when AI started playing chess better than humans, then ultimately AlphaGo are better at quiz shows now. These are all big data problems with non-trivial connections between the data but it's very easy to see when a solution is correct once you have it. Contrast that with hacking. Most hacking problems are not big data problems. We're looking at a single website with a few APIs and we're just breaking our brains over what programming errors could it be. If they are big data problems, so getting there, for instance, an entire Active Directory, thousands of computers, tens of thousands of users, all kinds of connections between them, often these connections are trivial. You can either access something or you can't. You can change somebody's password and maybe they can change somebody else's password and that's it. So simple tools, Bloodhound in this case, can evaluate these 
relatively trivial connections and basically find all security issues. You don't need a, an AI to do that. And then we have yet other problems that have big data and complex connections. For instance, you're looking at the entirety of somebody's source code, very complex. And there's some bugs in there. Where are the bugs? An AI will possibly tell you, this could be a bug, or this could be a bug, or this could be a bug. And in each of those cases, it's not trivial to know where that is. It's not trivial to know how it's to be exploited. So you need that human intelligence anyway. So if any of the three are missing, it's not big data, it doesn't have complex connections, or it's not easy to evaluate whether the solution is correct, there's no use, or at least no game-changing use of AI. Again, in defense, we do have big data problems with complex connections, like gigabytes of log data every single hour, that if you do have a hacking incident, it's relatively easy to evaluate that it is there and that it's worth investigating further. So that lends itself much more cleanly to the AIs that we have today. So there you have it, cyber and AI at the end of 2024, an evolving discussion of course, so we'll come back to this topic for sure. Subscribe so you don't miss out and let us know in the comments if you have any thoughts on AI and how it's evolving. Thank you and until next week, happy hacking.